This video brought to you by our two executive producers, Cosmosor and Tom Dolan. Thank you. I was walking home with someone recently, um, and I was on a conversation with them, and they brought up this time when they were they were walking home on their own, and they were interrupted by this group of loud, boisterous young people, and they found this experience like utterly disgusting. Like, how dare their afternoon be threatened by the presence of such a group? How dare approximately five teenage boys having a laugh with their mates dare to darken their this person's experience by existing near them? They were like genuinely outraged by these kids. Only they didn't call them kids. And if this situation sounds a bit ridiculous to you, you've obviously never heard a middle-class person talk about chaps. For the uninitiated, the word chav dates back to apparently 1988 where it was used in a Usenet forum post, but for the, the mainstream parlance it was used in 2002 in a newspaper to describe young working class people who happened to be wearing tracksuits and gold jewellery only exclusively in a negative and pejorative manner. In 2003, comedy sketch show Little Britain created a character called Vicky Pollard, who was supposed to be a caricature of Chavs, but to the point of parody. However, in 2006, a survey by YouGov suggested that 70% of TV ind industry professionals believed Vicky Pollard was an accurate portrayal of the white working class. The word has since been solidified into the British lexicon, and its usage has grown not just to mean simply that flavour of white working class person, but any member of the underclass that the speaker wants to demonise for being poor without having to justify themselves. Let me explain. The British upper and working classes seemingly since forever have created these fictions about the working class in an effort to justify their position in society and the lack of quality of life of the working class. Uh, to quote Johan Hari of The Independent, It's a strange phenomenon. Individuals consistently act to protect their own privilege and damn the poor, but they do not think about it in such naked terms. Instead, the privileged create subtle myths that suggest the poor are dirty, and stupid, and lazy, and therefore deserve their poverty. These myths often revolve around words or phrases that make it possible for privileged people to laugh at and hate the poor without needing to admit it out loud or even to themselves that that is what is happening. One of the things about chavs that seems to perturb those that use the word is the loudness and lack of taste of the people that they're deriding. They want the poor to be passive and silent, unseen and miserable. If they develop a value system or a culture that doesn't consist entirely of aspiring to be a middle class person, or God forbid they decide to intrude in middle class spaces in any way, they must be put in their place with this degrading and cruel label. And it isn't just me and Johan that think this way. Uh, Countdown's own wordsmith Susie Dent describes Chavs in this manner. Just one of the many newly popular, blatantly classist labels that have become popular over the past year. Look at Council House Chic, which describes brands like Burberry and Kappa. Or the Croydon facelift, where a Chav's hair is pulled back so tight it makes the skin taut. But to truly examine the, how the term demonizes the working class and dismisses the social and systemic issues that keep them there in the first place, let's take a look at a case study, specifically the woman described as the ultimate chav, Jade Goody. Now please note that Jade Goody did do and say some problematic and racist things in her appearance on Celebrity Big Brother 5, and this is in no way an endorsement or defense of those deeds. We're just looking at her in terms of the word chav and the media's uh, depiction of her. The late Jade Goody was a contestant on the TV show Big Brother in 2002, where she was mercilessly ridiculed for her loutish behavior, lack of elocution, and lack of general knowledge. 
But while she was mercilessly ridiculed time and time again by the media, and even spoke about in a government setting, never once was the reasons behind this behaviour ever examined. Instead, she was made into a sideshow, paraded around on television for the middle class to point and laugh at, while simultaneously generalising every woman below them on the totem pole as exactly as loutish and unrefined as Jade Goody. Blaming the fall of society on Jade Goody and women like Jade Goody. Had they taken the time to explore the reasons behind Jade's lack of trivia knowledge, they would have found tragedy. A girl who decided not to go to school much, opting instead to stay at home and look after her severely disabled mother, helping her dress and eat and get around. For showing this compassion in the face of a system that failed her and her mother, she was slapped down, called a moron, called a chav, called a waste of space. And for anyone that's ever been called a chav, and myself included, there is a story like this. Growing up on a council estate on its own is fucking rough, without getting pissed on by the richer classes whenever they feel the need. Thatcherism's rollout of unemployment and slashed school budgets and provisions for the poor across Britain is what created this cocktail of unemployment, addiction and poverty that are systematically used to beat down the working class chavs that are just trying to cope as best they can. And if their coping strategies include, God forbid, trying to be loudly happy in the face of disenfranchisement and systemic oppression, is that really such a problem? To quote former Labour MP Stephen Pound, People who use the word don't understand the joy and confidence in display. It is yet another example of class snobbery. What on earth is wrong with a bit of flash, a bit of bling bling? It keeps a lot of jewelers in business. You don't have to dig very deep in the discussion about chaps to find deeply entrenched classism. Particularly the idea that the poor are culturally, or maybe even sometimes genetically, deserving of their circumstances. Is it the vast chasm of social inequality, still poor education and housing and middle class protectionism that keeps the poor poor? Think again, say the prophets of chav hate. They talk about stupidity, breeding stupidity. One poster on the now defunct message board chavscum.com explains, they have no shame because they have no brains. It really is as simple as that. It borders on eugenics, genuinely thinking there is simply a genetic sub-race of stupid, crude chavs that will always eat crap and think crap and can he be heavily ignored. It's sickening. They've not only convinced themselves that they can get away with demonizing and simply hating the poor by calling them chavs, but they've partially succeeded in turning the working class against each other too. Those that have fallen into the trap of pretending to be civilized, i.e. pretending to be middle class and reserved, they look down on their neighbors for being chavy because they dare to act in a way that isn't sanctioned by the ruling class. This is yet another example of the incredibly successful line of divide and conquer tactics that the rich have been using for centuries. So especially if you're working class yourself, I urge you to rethink your attitude towards chavs and stop using this word to demonize ourselves. After all, you have way more in common with your chav neighbor than you do the millionaires and billionaires that are keeping both of you down. Huge shout out to everybody supporting me on Patreon. You make this and every video I make possible. A huge special thank you goes to the Fresh Cheese Bags of the Month. What Will Jedi Do, Swishy Clang, Neurotic Anarchy, The Magpie Magus, Malloy, Logan Myers, Carl Rod, Ethan Saffron, Alex Bryson, and our two executive producers, Cosmosaur and Tom Dolan. Thank you.